In one of my previous videos, we looked at how buck converters work, and in the modern day, they are among the most popular group of power supplies, known as switch mode power supplies. And that is for good reason, they are incredibly efficient. In the same category are boost converters, which are very similar in function, but instead they increase the input voltage instead of decreasing it. Now while all these switching supplies are truly amazing, they all have one disadvantage, and that is the noise that they create from switching. In most all cases, this is fine because most of our electronics nowadays are larger digital. But for analog circuits, especially those dealing with audio, the noise can become a big problem. That's where linear regulars come in. They have extremely low output noise and are also much simpler to make as well. So why don't we just use linear regulators all the time? Well, in this video, I will show you how a linear regulator works, as well as why you would and wouldn't want to use one. To start, we should take a look at one of the most well-known linear regulator ICs ever made, the LM317. If you look anywhere online, you are bound to find at least a few circuits with this IC. The best place to look to find out how this regulator works is this functional block diagram in the datasheet. We can see that it is mainly made up of a comparator and a Darlington transistor. There is also a 1.25 volt offset on the non-inverting input of the comparator represented by the Zener diode. Anyways, based on the diagram, we can already easily see how it works. First, remember that op amps always try to keep both inputs equal, so since it is in a buffer configuration, it will always try to drive the transistor to output a voltage equal to the non-inverting input. The reason why a Darlington transistor is used instead of just a regular transistor is that a Darlington transistor will have a higher output current. Remember that transistors will have gain based on flowing current so two transistors together will have a higher current gain. Let's use some numbers to provide an example for you. Let's say that the input is about 12 volts, and we put a 5 volt signal on the adjust pin. Now because of the voltage offset, the non-inverting input will be at 6.25 volts. Now to keep both inputs equal, the op amp will start driving the transistor to reach an output of 6.25 volts. Now we can see the problem that linear regulators face, and that is power loss as heat. So while we have a 6.25 volt output, we also drop 5.75 volts through the transistor to get to the output. Let's say for example that our circuit was drawing 1 amp through it. That means we have 5.75 watts of power loss as heat. And this only gets worse with higher voltages and higher currents, thus creates a need for a heat sink if the load is large enough. So you'll have to manage your heat sink and load carefully because a recommended operating temperature for the LM317 is 0 to 125 degrees Celsius. Another disadvantage is that the minimum voltage it can output is 1.25 volts because of the offset, and that the datasheet recommends a minimum of at least 3 volts drop across the entire regulator. Luckily, the heat dissipation is just about its only real main disadvantage. Let's set up an example circuit to explain some of its advantages. Luckily, the datasheet already provides us an example circuit that we can copy and build ourselves. So after building that circuit, we can already see the first main advantage, and that is the low power count required to operate the circuit. Even the adjust pin can be driven simply by using a voltage divider derived from the output. After hooking up the circuit to my oscilloscope, we can see that the output really is quite stable, even when we change the load or change the output voltage. However, you can still take this project a step further by implementing the entire internal circuit of the LM317 ourselves. We will be using the LM358 as our op amp and the IRLZ44N MOSFET as our transistor. The reason why I didn't use a pair of MPN transistors as a Darlington transistor is because 1. the MOSFET is simpler to use and 2. it has a surface for easily mounting a heatsink. And so I simply removed the LM317 from the circuit and placed the two parts into its place. The inverting input went to the source pin of the MOSFET, thus completing the buffer. The non-inverting input was then connected to the middle of the voltage divider. However, it wasn't working as expected, and the output was essentially connected to zero volts. However, it did work when driven by a voltage source directly. So how does the LM317 manage to allow the use of a resistor divider? Let's review the LM317's diagram again to see what we are missing. Looking at the diagram, we can now understand the purpose of the diode and the current source. Without those two components, the op amp will always try to output a voltage that is a division of what it is currently, lowering their output over time. The diode and the current source on the other hand 
will work together to basically copy the voltage on the divider. The current source will change its output voltage in whatever way necessary to always have 10 microamps of current throwing through it. And ignoring the diode for a moment, since voltages in parallel should be equal, the current source will match the resistor divider. However, we still have the output division problem. So we can add a diode to force the output current source to output a voltage slightly higher than the resistor divider. We have a few options for our diode. First, we can simply put a normal diode with a cathode facing the resistor divider or have that same diode with a cathode facing the current source. They both technically work, but the LM317 does it in the best way possible. It has the diode cathode facing the current source, but the diode instead is a low voltage Zener. The reason why this is the best way is because the Zener diode will provide a predictable voltage drop across it, whereas a typical diode will either have a massive reverse voltage breakdown or have a varying voltage drop depending on factors like current or temperature. For those of you who are curious, the reason why the current doesn't just flow through the diode is because the voltage is higher and we all know that current will flow from higher to lower voltages. And since the current from the source is so low, it won't affect the resistor divider much. So the combination of these two parts allows for a simple way to copy the voltage divider's output just with a 1.25 volt offset. So for our circuit, we need to pick parts that will function as our current source and as in our diode. The LM334 is a suitable current source that will give us a 10 microamp current. The LM385 is a 1.25 voltage reference IC, but it functions as a Zener diode as seen from its internal diagram. Now we can see that varying the potentiometer will allow us to pick the output voltage, and it stays stable even when the load changes. If you want to see the full schematic, feel free to look at the link in the description. The only thing left to do is to solder the circuit properly together and to make a linear power supply out of it. So I soldered together all the components and added also a current and voltmeter display. Now we have a linear power supply that can provide a clean output voltage. It basically is just a large sort of life size LM317 and it operates basically the same as well. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing so that you can see my other videos. Have a good one.